أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيب قلوبنا وشفي ذنوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا أبا القاسم المصطفى محمد صلي على محمد وآل محمد وعلى أهل بيته طيبين الطاحرين سيما الحجاة فقية الله العظم روحي وأرواحنا له فداء ولعن دائم على أعدائهم إجمعين إلى قيام يوم الدين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقضة من لساني يفقه قولي So our discussion was about our journey towards the Creator how we can see closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and yesterday we mentioned one of the barriers that prevents us from seeking closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which was basically what? Following your hawa and nafs. And we explained and gave the definition of the hawa and nafs and what it means and what, how we can counter or how we can uh, work against that so we don't follow our hawa and nafs. There's another concept when it comes to, if you look at, forget about yourself, there's another concept or an influence. So sometimes we're influenced by our surroundings as well. In, that, in, in, in a situation, for example, let's say a person, for example, he doesn't follow his nafs. He doesn't follow his what? Worldly desires. But he's in an environment where people that have a negative influence on that individual. Would that, that, would that still affect him even though that he doesn't follow his nafs? According to the narrations that we have, yes, it will. So what is the discussion that we're going to have when we talk about another barrier which prevents you from seeking closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? There's two things that we're going to discuss and we're going to talk a bit about inshallah today. The first thing or the first subject, it's the subject or the concept that we call having role models. And the second one, when it comes to your friends, your friendship basically, your environment. Because when you look at ethics, ethics is basically in Islam, it's your relationship to your creator, your relationship to yourself. We talked about those aspects. But our relationship to other individuals in the society, we haven't focus too much on that. So what is it that make us as individuals take role models? You see, from the start, when we grow up as children, as babies, the first thing a child starts to do, they look at their parents, how they eat, how they walk. They learn from the parents how to walk. They learn from the parents how to speak. And it doesn't, it's not limited to babies either. So when that child grows a bit older, it's not only limited to, I, to, to, to how you talk, you walk, or simple actions. No, it goes even further than that. It goes further. You start having ideas from that person. You start accepting principles from that person. You start having an opinion. You start using your, your brain, basically, you, the way you use your intellect. So it's not only behavior anymore, but also ideas, thoughts, values of being taught from what? who? The people around you. In other words, we imitate other individuals and that's the concept which we call social learning. In other words, we learn from other individuals through action, not what they say necessarily. That's why I say if you want to be good parents, you be the role model, you be the change that you want to see in your, in your children first and foremost. Why? Because the, the way that children, they learn from behavior, they look at what you do, not what you say. First and foremost, if you tell your child not to be an angry person or not give after the anger, if you're an angry person yourself, it's not going to have the influence that you're looking for. They look at what you do before they look at what you say. You need to be a role model for your children before you can be what? Be a teacher for your children. So it starts with what? We imitate their behavior. Then afterwards, slowly, we start imitating their ideas, their values and the principles that they hold as well. So we imitate the way they think, what they do. A lot of us were religious or within a religious community. Why? We had it from home. If not, we accepted it afterwards. A lot of people, they accepted religion. What? They follow a specific religion because it was something that will be been taught at home. It's quite common that we imitate. It's not something supernatural that we imitate. But unfortunately, a lot of people, they think it's only when it comes to positive things. No. When we're talking about seeking, journey, seeking closeness to Allah and our journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the things that 
becomes a barrier for us sometimes, it's when we have role models that leads us astray. In other words, they misguide us or they deviate us. They are the source of deviation for a lot of people. That's the false role models or the false prophets in that community and that society that we have. Peace of sight, Allah. That's why you see even Western philosophers, they accept this principle. They say the soul and mind of a human being is like a mirror. They keep reflecting themselves in other individuals. In other words, they learn from other individuals. We have another narration from the Prophet where he says, Al-Mu'min Miratul Mu'min. A Mu'min, a believer, he should be a mirror for another believer. So what is that? You're imitating the, the action, the behavior, and the way he conducts himself, this person. In the Holy Quran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he talks about role models, he said, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا There's a good example for you in the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He presents the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ta'ala as a good role model for individuals, for the human being. Why? Because he knows and understands the influence role models have on the children. Why? It's a part of our natural instinct. We learned this since we were children, since we were kids. The first thing we used to do as babies, when we saw our parents, they were eating in a specific way, we wanted to eat with a spoon or a fork as well. Yes, it was simple back then, but the mentality and the instincts, it resides in the heart of a mu'min, of a believer. Even non-believers as well. Hence you have verses from the Holy Quran that talks about negative role models as well. The people that what? وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ أَمَّةً يَدْعُونَ إِلَى النَّارِ they call people towards the hellfire, these individuals. And the words continue, وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةَ لَا يُنصَرُونَ But these role models are not going to help them on the Day of Judgment. They followed them, they imitated them, but on the Day of Judgment, they're going to be like, no, you're on your own. We can't help you anymore. They were the source of corruption for the people that were following them. Hence, this discussion needs to be discussed that when we talk about role models, dear brothers and sisters, it holds a great, va important value. Such a huge value that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He chose role models for, the hum for humanity, He said that they need to be infallible. If they're not infallible, then you can't take it as a role model. Do you think that, that we call the Imam and, 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 and the Prophets, alayhi wasalam, we call them ma'asum? It was just a coincidence? It's exactly this aspect of it. In other words, because they are role models and role models have such a huge influence on the people that they follow, they should be infallible. If not, they're infallible, they can lead people astray. In other words, it's the hereafter of individuals that we're investing in when we're saying that these people, they should be infallible. Why? Because when they are infallible, they can be good, become good Guides for humanity. If not, then it's not. There's a possibility that they're going to lead people astray. Therefore, infallibility is a very important concept in specifically in Shia Islam. Because we understand the influence a role model has on its own followers. That's why you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran is not only concepts he's talking about. He's not telling you that patience is a good thing. Being resistant is a good thing. Having taqwa is a good thing. He also gives you the history of the prophets and the story of the prophets. So you can look at how a role model, he actually implemented those concepts as well. He gives you both. He's not saying that concepts are sufficient. This is patience. This is how you attain it. No, I'm going to give you the manual on how you practice it as well. What is that? The Prophet Ayyub alayhi salam. He gives you the example as well, the role model as well. Such a huge influence it has. So what is the, the discussion when we talk about that role models, they can lead people astray. What is it? What's the cause of it? Why is it that these role models, we first and foremost take them as role models? That's sometimes it's because we are too superficial when it comes to the apparent. We look at something specific. And we think, because of this positive trait, this person must be good and, I, and I accept him as a role model. Have you seen that a lot of people, they say, don't be quick at passing judgments. Yeah? Don't judge people too quickly. It's good when it comes to bad things, but when it comes to good things, 
Do we think, do we have the same perception as well? Or are we quick at passing judgments? As soon as we hear a person, he speaks nice. He gives a good lecture, for example. Do we become inspired of that person? And do we take him as a role model or not? We live in an era and in an age where, unfortunately, this is the case. He has some success. Just the fact he's a Muslim. He could be the most corrupt individual. We don't care. He's a Muslim and he has success with his, with his education. Suddenly we follow him. We like everything he puts up. Even when he says something that is batil, we are biased because of our attachment to that person now. We don't... Role models have such a huge influence. Why? Because you can choose the role model, but that effect that role model has on you as a follower of that role model is not in your hands. You can choose who to be your role model, but the effect of that role model is not in your hands anymore. It's just going to have its influence. Why? Because you don't have a, you're not critical about that person anymore. The same moment that you accept a certain person as a being your role model, he's not, you're not going to be critical anymore. What values and what he's saying and this and that, you're going to accept it. You're going to be biased in your perception and your acceptance as well. Why? Because you have an attachment to that person now. So the same way we say that we shouldn't be quick at passing judgments, bad judgments about other individuals, the same comes when it comes to positive things. Just because this person is saying something beautifully, doesn't mean that we have to follow him now. Just because he has success in one aspect of his life, doesn't make him suitable for being a role model in all aspects of life. That's why I see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gives such a huge importance to following the right role models in the Holy Quran, that He says that, يَوْمَ نَدْعُوا كُلُّ أُنَاسٍ بِإِمَامِهِمْ A person is not going to be called on the Day of Judgment by his name, by his family name. No, he's going to be lined up based on the person he was following. In other words, the role model that he accepted. Be imamihim, the people that you follow, you're going to stand in line with them. And some people, they're going to regret them. They're going to look at, what was this person I was following? Because we can claim one thing that we claim that we follow the Prophet, we follow him alayhi wasalam. But when we follow other individuals, influencers on social media, I don't know what, in practice, that's the people we're going to be resurrected with on the Day of Judgment. Why? Because Allah, He knows. You can say, I'll follow Ali ibn Abi Talib But if you didn't in practice, then it's not Amir al-Mu'mineen you're going to stand behind on the Day of Judgment. It's those influences, I don't know, social media gurus that you're following. And can they help you? Of course not. La yunsaroon. They're going to say, I have nothing to do with that person. I have nothing to do with that person. Accepting role models, dear brothers and sisters, is very important. First and foremost, we need to understand that every single individual, they follow some other people. They have that concept of social learning. We all imitate other individuals. But it's in our, ha our hands what kind of individuals that we want to follow and imitate. And we need to be careful and sensitive about that. Not every person that says something beautifully we should follow or we should think that he's suitable for being a role model. The person needs to be what? In line and continuation of, of an infallible person. Or else we will be led astray. The concept of imama in Islam is exactly that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose the imams for what? Because of what? He wanted us to know their names, what age they died in? Oh no, they were practical examples for us. In other words, they were role models. This aspect of it should be followed. This aspect of it should, we should be sensitive about. In other words, any person that doesn't link us to an infallible person, to a person which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen to be a guide, guide for humanity, that person, forget about him. Yes, you can take inspiration in a specific thing, but don't think he's suitable for being a role model. You're going to regret that on the Day of Judgment when you will be resurrected with that person. So one of the major barriers that exist, dear brothers and sisters, when it comes to seeking closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is false role models. So what kind of role model specifically here in Scandinavia, as a minority, within a minority, in a non-Muslim country, what role model should we be more sensitive about or should we look after 
when it comes to what? The role models we accept or imitate. Like, what is it that we should be careful about, sensitive about? Can anybody give me an answer? What type of role model? What type of role model should be, we even be more sensitive and critical about? Can anybody tell me that? Yeah? Uh, the prophets. The prophets? No, no, I mean like, which one should we be careful of? That we should be warned against, basically. What kind of false prophets exist in the society or in the community, in this, which can lead us astray more than anybody else? Which, which can be that barrier in our journey towards the Creator more than anybody else? What? Famous. famous people. What kind of famous people? Artists. Yeah, what kind of artists? Just random artists? I have nothing in common with Justin Bieber. I'm never going to follow that. <laughs> I'm never going to follow these like actors and you know like some of these singers. And I have nothing in common with them. Swedish rappers. Swedish rappers. We're getting closer to to the more local. Yeah. Other than Swedish rappers. Yeah. <laughs> what? What? Muslims. Muslims. One of the things that we should be careful about, when they want role models or they choose role models and they make some role models famous for you in order to assimilate Muslims, they don't pick and choose some white guy from another neighborhood who has nothing in common with you. They're going to find individuals from the Muslim community, from the Muslim society, and they're going to make them famous. Famous because they hold some values that people can relate to, but at, at the other side, and at the same time, they're going to promote an ideology which is completely in contrast to the ideology which you hold as a Muslim. Do we have a few of these individuals? I know in Denmark we have a lot of them. Yeah. These Muslims that suddenly, all of a sudden, they became famous because of what? Sometimes they even wear the hijab, they even Muslim, they have beard, they pray their prayers as well sometimes. But when you look at the values and the ideas they're promoting amongst the youth, you find that they're completely liberal in their understanding. Basically, what they're promoting is a worship of the nafs. Nothing more than that. Do what you want to do. Do It's everything. You're just putting it in, in an Islamic rap. But the idea is kuf. They're using the fact that they have something in common with you to get closer to you because you're going to be distance yourself from far behind. If you see that person has nothing in common with you, then you're going to be alerted. But when you see it's a Muslim, he prays, he actually accepts Islam according to himself. But that one specific thing which he's famous for promoting is something that ruins the Iman of people, which creates the biggest barrier between you and, your, and getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and completely deviates you on your journey towards the Creator, that's what they're going to make him famous for. And then after they use them, you know what they do? They discard them, throw them out like trash. We had a lot of these debaters in, in Denmark, they were like that. In the beginning, they were like, there was a woman, she's quite famous, she defended hijab and muhajjabat. She came up, suddenly her hijab herself, it was completely gone. Suddenly, it was other things that she was defending. From defending hijab and Islam to that, and that's why she was becoming famous. And then after she had got her fame, and they saw that they assimilated a large amount of people, and people that were following her, she, because she was this influencer, they thought that she was a Muslim woman who had her principles in her. Oh, then afterwards, they, she lost her fame, like they didn't care anymore about her. She wasn't that important anymore. Today, she's not even important. No media coverage, no nothing. Because they used her what they wanted to use her for. It was all about the political, what? Political agenda they had before. Dear brothers and sisters, the fake prophets of our community, of our society, would never be an individual who has nothing in common with you. It would always be somebody who has something in common with you. Whether it's the skin of your color, the nationality, your religion, Sometimes it could even be religious symbols. Be careful. Sometimes it could even be a turban or imams. We have those as well. United States of America, alhamdulillah, in Europe, we don't have so many of them. But in the United States of America, you can find people that go on the member, sit on the member, and they pro promote a secular state, basically. They promote a secular state. They say that everything should be secular. 
Islam has nothing to do with politics. I don't know, they justify all sorts of values with, which can't be justified in Islam. But they do it quite openly. And people, they follow them. They are the fake prophets of our time, dear brothers and sisters. The role models that we should be careful about. Why? Because if a person, a Swedish politician from Sverige Demokrata, he tells you to take off your hijab, you're never going to do it as a sister. Be like, I'm going to be even more resistant now. You'll be offended. But if a sister comes and she becomes a role model for you, she wears the hijab herself, but suddenly she becomes famous following certain beauty ideals and she starts to take off the hijab, you'll do it as well. You imitate her basically. She's a role model now. She has the influence on you. In other words, they're going to find people that what? That have something in common with you. The same goes for the brothers. They're not going to find some random guy from a racist, for example. Rasmus Paludan. They're not going to present him as a role model for you. People are going to throw stones after him. They're going to present a nice Muslim, well-educated, good speaking, good skills. And he's going to lead you towards those values that you don't want to indulge in. Why? Because it ruins your journey towards the Creator. That's one of the greatest barriers that exist in our time. That's these fake prophets and fake role models that exist out there. Therefore, Ayyam salam, they gave us the solution for that. See, look at whether that person is actually a, promote, a promoting or just being somebody who's con considered to be bridging the gap between you and an infallible person, basically. If he promotes the ideas of Ayyam alayhi salam, of Ahlul Bayt salam, if he's connected to them and follow their seerah, the way they did things, and their principles, you know that's a good role model for you to follow. Whatever he is. If he's an engineer, if he's an artist, whatever he is. When he follows that, and or in line with the principles we have from Ahlul Bayt, you can take him as a role model. Because then he's not the purpose of follow, being followed himself. You, follow only, you only follow that person because he leads you to something greater. Which is the representative that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he chose for humanity to guide individuals. The only function, the fun only function is a bridge here now. So that's the first thing. The second thing that I want to mention quite quickly is the other thing that also has an influence. One of the brothers, he mentioned it. And that is friendship. Friendship. Our friends, people around us. Can anybody tell me why is it that we get together with other individuals? What is the reason we find? What is the reason behind we find friends? Why do we hook up with other individuals? Common interest. Common interest. One of the brothers he said. Other reasons? Why is it that we get together with other individuals based on what? Change uh, mind. <laughs> like l mindset. To exchange information uh, to search and like get knowledge basically to learn be inspired learn, yeah be other other opinions validation validation to be confirmed and yeah, yeah? Be uh, yeah. so help, help together mm. dear brothers and sisters attachment attachment is like glowing coal within your heart friendship is that wind that blows it whether it's positive or negative and reinforce the attachment you have. They say sometimes, tell me who your friends are, I'm going to tell you who you are. Have you heard that before? Yes. Yeah? It's opposite. Tell me who you are, I'm going to tell you who your friends are. Why? Because the reason why you find that up with other people, you hook up with other individuals, you know what it is? Your own attachments. Why are we sitting here today? I came from Denmark. I, didn't, I don't even know you. You know, like, seriously, we have no common interests. No common interest other than the religion. Other than the religion. It's attachment for Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, for the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we had iftar for I don't know how many nights together now these couple of days. Because of what? Because attachments that we have in common basically. And when you find friends according to that attachment, those attachments will be reinforced. Hence, we should be careful what kind of attachments you find, first and foremost. Second, what kind of friends you find, because they will reinforce the attachment. If they're positive, it will be positive. If not, they're negative, it will be negative as well. Let's say you have some attachments that are bad for you, and you know it's bad for you. 
you have a strong attachment for your worldly affairs. And you find other individuals that reinforce that attachment. How is that going to have an impact on you? How is that going to have an impact on you? Sometimes it goes to an extent or to an extreme that you're going to show up on the day of judgment and the verse tells us how a person is going to react. Ya laytani lam fulanan khalila. I wish I didn't choose this person as a friend. In other words, this person came into my life and he reinforced all the bad things that were residing inside me. So I, be even, I became even worse. Then you're going to regret on the day of judgment. But if the, that person is a good person, he's reinforcing the good st- things that resides within you. That's why we have conditions and a hadith about choosing your friends as well. I'll mention some of the conditions in a beautiful narration from Prophet Isa alayhi, alayhi wa alayhi salam. It's so beautiful. But we should understand the concept of friendship also plays a huge role on how we conduct ourselves and our character and our personality. That's why you see the Prophet in a narration he states, Your religion is based on what? The religion of your friend. Such a huge influence does your friend have on you as an individual. Because sometimes we ask ourselves, I was a good person, I was a muttaqi, but I had friends that were non-Muslims, or I had friends that were not religious. Of course, it's just a matter of time before you will accept some of the values as well. You'll be influenced. You choose your friends with the impact your friends have on you, you don't choose that. Just like role models. Everything we said about role models, the same applies when it comes to friends. That's why I see Prophet Isa in a narration, beautifully, he stated, the Hawariyin, the disciple of Prophet Isa they asked him, what is the conditions that we should look for and that should be met when we're talking about choosing a friend for ourselves? Man nujalis, who should we sit with? Who should we be friends with? Look how Prophet Isa he answered. The first thing, the first condition. May you dhakirukum Allah ru'yata. Just looking at him reminds you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does that mean? That he's beautiful? No. You're sitting with him, the prayer enters, he goes to pray. Reminds you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He stays away from that which is haram. He reminds you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's fasting, you want to open your iftar with him. He reminds you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just looking at this person and the way he behaves reminds you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the first condition of a friend, the second one. وَيَزِيدُكُمْ وَيَزِيدَ فِي عَمَلِكُمْ مَنْطِقَةً وَيَزِيدُ فِي أَلْمِكُمْ عَفْوًا مَنْطِقَةً When he talks, he will increase your knowledge as well. In other words, it's not just some guy who's saying random things, you know, like joking all the time 24-7. There should be space for that as well. I'm not saying it shouldn't be. But the way that he talks, he shouldn't be an ahmaq basically. He shouldn't be an idiot. Yeah? The only thing that comes out of his mouth is something that you can't use. You can't benefit from it. You know, I've wasted my time with this person. I've listened so much to him, it didn't increase my knowledge in nothing other than accepting that this person is a fool. His words should be some sort of an inspiration for you. That you should be taken from that person. And the third one, وَيَنْقِبُكُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ amalu. His actions should make you what? Seek towards the Akhirah. When you look at this person, you should find some sort of a desire for the hereafter. As an individual, when you look at how he conducts himself, his behavior reminds you of the hereafter, basically. And creates that emotional bond you should have to the hereafter. You see him striving for the hereafter. With sincerity, for example. That makes you want the hereafter as well. Why? Because you're looking at his behavior and his action. Prophet Isa he mentions those conditions. Why? Because he understands the influence that friendships they have on us as individuals. Hence, it's important that we understand that choosing a friend reinforces both the good things and the bad things that resides within us. Therefore, we should be careful. Shaykhna, so what's the solution then? Make sure, first and foremost, that you find out if you have some bad friends, you should know that you're the reason why you're finding these individuals. In other words, the cause of you finding these individuals resides within your own heart. Find out what that is, take care of it, and get rid of those the bad friends. Second, replace the individuals that reinforce the bad things in your heart. 
if you had some bad friends and they only reinforce the bad and negative within your heart, replace them. Alhamdulillah, there's a lot of good people out there, positive people out there that reinforces the positive within your heart. Why you want to sacrifice them for these individuals that only going to be a source of regret for you on the day of judgment? Why? So that's basically the solution. Find out what is it that makes me seek towards these individuals because it resides within myself and make sure to replace those individuals that only reinforces the bad thing within me. Because then you will have no excuse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He blessed human beings with such a beautiful thing that He left no excuses for human beings. You can say it was my friends and were my role models, they led me astray. But He gave you something, He gave you something which basically is a proof upon yourself. Let me give you an example. If a person is inside a house and there's 15 doors in that house, 14 of these doors are locked and the house starts to burn. And the house starts to burn. Would you tell yourself, I'm just going to sit here, burn down with the house because there's 14 doors that are closed? People will tell you, you, you must be a fool then. There's one door open. You could exit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the intellect as that last door when everything becomes biased. You will always have your intellect. In other words, on the day of judgment, you will have no excuse. You can say that, oh, I was influenced by this person, that person. You have your intellect. That one door will open. Why didn't you exit? When you saw the house was burning down, why didn't you exit? You had your intellect. And that's a hujjah upon us. That's a proof upon us. So dear brothers and sisters, the last thing that has an impact on our journey towards the Creator is role models and friendships. If these two things are bad and reinforce the bad things that resides within our heart, forget about seeking closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then even if you do tafakkur, you do repentance and all these things, you will still have an issue and that is that if you're not in, the, in control of yourself, you're under influence by your surroundings. And if they are bad, it's going to have a negative, negative impact on you as well. So that was the last thing that we wanted to discuss. So we've been at your service for, for 10 days now. And if there were any shortcomings, any flaws, any mistakes that I made, I didn't answer some of the questions thoroughly, then please forgive me, inshallah. It was an honor to be here and to have these sessions to sit down with you. And truly it was an inspiration, especially being amongst the brothers, hearing their stories and learning from them as well in the different gatherings that we have. So uh, please forgive me if there were any shortcomings and remember me in your dua, inshallah, when I'm not here for the rest of Ramadan. Especially Layla Tul Qadr, don't forget this humble servant in your prayers, inshallah ta'ala. We need it more than you do, I'm definitely sure of that. So I'll appreciate it if you remember me in your du'as, inshallah, on Layla Tul Qadr. If there's any questions I would like to answer, if not, then I think that is it, yeah? Salaam.